Hello, so it's been pretty much a week since this has been turned on. In fact, that's a lie. It's been six days, but regardless, I've been writing a little log here. This is uh, this is the log of the last few days. On average, it does about three billion counts uh, a day. Uh, I, th I think I've got my zeros right. I'm <laughs> just trying to remember. It's doing all right. It's doing okay. I stupidly missed the carryover uh, to the second row. That happened... Uh, it happened... Yesterday, yesterday night, some point at about six o'clock in the morning, I think. Uh, so I figured I may as well do a video answering some uh, questions and just um, some points that have been raised in the comments because a lot of people, thank you very much, have commented about, you know, I would have done this, I would have done that. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So anyway, let's have a look at these uh, comments and we'll just um, answer some questions and stuff. Uh, by the way, this is definitely not a computer. Definitely not. So I've got to... Uh, so I'm just going to go through the comments and just answer some of the questions. There have been a lot of very similar questions and suggestions and stuff. So we'll just have a look at some of these. I like to imagine a whole, whole civilization shaking in fear as the counter gets closer and closer to finishing. No records left of what it was actually counting, but maintained over time. That would be cool. I mean, I, I have a, f I have a really doubt it's going to last that long in this current state, but that's the whole point of it. It's going to be modified. I just needed it to get it done and out of the, uh, you know, out of the door uh, so I can build on it and modify it later on, obviously. Well, we'll talk about it as we, as the questions come up. At this rate, he is making a computer. I mean, it's not really a computer, it's a counter, but I guess a counter is sort of computing, I guess, in a weird form. Why are you using a 555 to count? You should be using something more stable, like an atom clock, or, or using, yeah, just use a master stable clock. This is something that's come up quite a few times about why am I using such a rubbish clock? Well, the answer is quite simple. Why would you use a stable clock in something like this? I find it more interesting to have something that's waving around that could fluctuate and such, which would mean that it's giving, uh, you know, it's nearly impossible to predict, uh, you know, certain times of certain landmark occasions in this thing's life and funnily enough in our lifetime the landmark occasions the last one we'll probably see is about is about there in about I don't know 10 15 years so <laughs> so yeah it's gonna be a bit of a hard to predict but I find that a good thing like the fact is yeah I just don't see the point in making something stable what's the point what's the point not for me if, if you think you should do it that way please just do it. And this also comes on to another question that comes up quite a lot. And that question is, why don't you make the clock quicker? Why, why is it running so slowly? Currently, it's running at around about 3000 uh, counts per second, near enough, three kilohertz. And um, yeah, I mean, initially, I was planning on making it going as quickly as possible. But the thing is, in the end of the day, even if you make it like in gigahertz, or even faster, uh, which these these chips won't take but uh, you know like it, in the upgrades and upgrades well yeah it would get it would get there quicker but it still wouldn't get there it still wouldn't even get to the third row in gigahertz in our lifetime and another question came up quite a lot which will this will answer both of them it's like why is there a free eights at the start why aren't these counting well it's because they're counting so quickly that you can't see them and because eight has got all of the segments lit it's um yeah that's just what comes up when all of the numbers are being counted really quick but the thing is if you have a quicker clock well it just means that there's going to be more eights at the bottom and the count is just going to be pushed forwards a few numbers it's not going to count any quicker to a google relatively so what, what what's the point what what's the rush? What's the what's the rush? How about blowing some components when moving up the count, like an SMD diode or resistor, basically to use it as a kind of physical memory that can be used to restart the count if it's ever needed. That's quite a cool idea. I mean, practically off the top of my head, I'm not sure how to make that work with these counters, but that's it's quite a good idea. You know, like using uh, what's he suggesting? Using diodes. Uh, using low tolerant diodes as things to be like permanent uh, bits basically like there are certain technologies that use uh, like diodes and components and fuses to actually blow to make permanent memory uh, which is really cool but yeah it would be cool to do it in this but I don't know whether Maybe, maybe that's a good idea, actually, because the late, some of the later ones, yeah, I mean, it wouldn't require a completely different design, but 
Might be a good idea. Might be a good idea. 3,000 years later, did we get the answer to life, the universe, and everything? Question mark, question mark. No, but we got really high on the counter. I like that. Some people are taking it for face value. You know, obviously, this hasn't been built to last. Uh, it's going to hopefully over time be built to last. But right now, it's just, it's a, it's a bit of fun. But it's going to, you know, hopefully it'll get more important to me, like I say. And I will take more time and care into making sure it's going to outlive me. And then it's somebody else's problem somebody else's problem oh this is quite an interesting and technically uh this might answer the question that we've been looking for oh yeah about those sixes because the first time i turned this on uh the whole row the whole top row was just sixes i only turned on the two and it was just a massive well it was 11 i mean i think all of them turned on at six but it was just counting quickly so it sort of yeah it's a bit weird but oh yeah about those sixes it's a well-known bug with the 4026b chip where if you power up a certain number of them at the same time you open up a momentary portal to hades it's nothing to worry about. Well, thank you for answering that. I did ask if anybody knew the answer, so <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad it's sorted. Little did he know that by doing this, he had finally set an expiry date of existence of the universe. <laughs> a lot of comments came up saying, are you going to scream this? Well, yeah, actually. There's a patron by the name of Elliot Cooper who's programmed a Pi Zero to, yeah, basically stream, and we're going to have it streaming onto my site. I need to find somewhere to seat this, but when it's sat down and when it's set up, it's going to have yeah it's going to have a camera facing it constantly and then on the museum of everything else website it's just gonna yeah it's gonna be streaming indefinitely until it definitely dies as you can see underneath actually it's on a shelf at the minute i'm waiting for some aluminium that's going to encase it so i'm able to put it into a 19 inch rack so it's movable around and stuff because right now behind it it's a bit of a mess it's definitely uh in a very rushed to build phase and it's gonna it's gonna be a lot more bomb proof by the time the museum opens. What happens when you get a power cut? Well, this is another thing. It's got a backup power supply. Right now it's on a APC 1400. This is obviously not perfect. It's a UPS and it's not perfect and I need to solve it potentially with a second one or something. But there's another thing that I'm planning with this in the future probably one of the one of the next things is getting a solar panel that's directly connected to this it's running off 12 volts so it doesn't actually need to be powered by the mains it just needs to have a nice big chunky battery system and some solar panels then it will just be completely off the grid and i won't feel that guilty about having all the zeros on because right now i'm planning on sort of having it on a skeleton shift uh, when it's closed because there's no point having all of the zeros off on when it's only going to count to halfway through there in our lifetime uh I, it seems to make sense turning all of the counter the rest of the counter on when it's like being exhibited and when uh, the museum's open for instance when it's not open may as well turn it off but if it's powered by solar panels then it doesn't really matter and then these can get nice burn marks gosh knows what these uh, leds how long they're gonna last i have no idea how long these things are gonna last uh, because obviously it's logic and it's it's chips and and these leds it's gonna it's a big question and also a lot of people have said about sockets and connections and shouldn't be using sockets and stuff solder straight to it uh yeah this is cool but i'm planning on sort of circumnavigating this by making it maybe fill it with argon that'd be quite cool something like that so so it doesn't corrode i mean this is obviously down the line uh, this uh, acrylic isn't particularly airtight because i built it myself but who knows it doesn't it's not going to take a lot to take all the shelves off lay it out when it's still on that is pretty evil sounding like frankenstein like disembowering it when it's open it's like oh my eyes but yeah and then be able to make a new case for it this is just the first case it's in and then yeah uh, hopefully in a few years it's it, it's going to be a ship of feces situation like i've said a few times where where this is all replaced by the time that you know there is this this original one is actually there and counting again when the actual uh, like completely replaced new version which is still keeping the count which the original count as long as the original count is still counting seems fine by me it would just be quite funny if this just completely got replaced, but its sentience, its consciousness, which is the actual count, has been transferred over to a new body, so to speak. It's sort of like the whole conundrum with teleportation of humans. And, you know, you're getting a new body if you get teleported. It's all new atoms and whatnot. Well, this could just be the same thing. Like, will it be the same counter? Well, if I don't tell anyone and just say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it will be. It's pretty cool.
the 3D printed shelves are probably only going to last a few years. To be honest, that's fair enough. Like there hasn't been a massive amount of research put into 3D printed parts and stuff because they've probably only been around for the best part of 10 years. And as it's gone on and gone on, it's got better. And I, I personally built a rap, rep wrap uh, back in 2011 which was one of the first kind of DIY 3D printers you could get. And I really am annoyed about getting rid of it. And if anybody has a rep wrap 3D printer sitting about, I would love to sort of uh, maybe strike up a deal and get it off you to get it for the museum because it's just some, it's, it's, uh, to me, it's a sort of really interesting piece of history because it's literally just a 3D printer just bolted together with 3D printed parts that were printed on another rep wrap. It's really cool. It's a silly idea, but it's like most 3D printers. And the thing is, is a lot of, I, I did a lot of research into the uh, sort of what to use to 3D print to make it last long enough. And people um, sort of said the best thing is just to use PLA. Uh, it's, it should last for many years. So yeah, the PLA may get brittle. Who knows? It's just wait and see. This is a big test. Nobody's really going to know. It may droop over time. But the thing is, is they're not on a massive angle. They're not taking a lot of load. It's not going to be a problem, I don't think. And if, and if they do droop, then it's just a case of replacing them with a bit of aluminium, I guess. You remind me of the guy in Waterworld that was sailing around the ocean alone for too long and tries to sell paper to Kevin Costner. F fair enough. There's been a number of people that have said that there is a really good circuit that I should have used, and, I, and, and in all, with all, with all, in all tr honesty, I probably definitely should have done this. So basically, there's a way of uh, sending a tiny little pulse on boot up to the reset pin of the 4026 timer chips. I'm trying to find the comment down here. They, they, somebody outlined what to do, but you just yeah, you have a little capacitor that's connected to the reset pin and on a, with a resistor as well. And it and it will send a little bit of a jolt to make sure it resets on startup every time. And I'm very annoyed and I wish I, I, wish I did that on all of these. How do you know it's actually going to work and m won't miss a carry on to the next digit somewhere along the line? This is another thing like, uh, well, I have tested them. Uh, so I sort of know that they will carry over like when I was resetting them I had to test them all so I, but there's no there's no knowing that it will actually carry over like I'm not sure there there could be at some point uh, a, an oxidation on a counter that doesn't that doesn't help the carry through but I guess if that situation happens then it's just going to have to be manually done and cleaned and fixed like okay it's never it's going to be impossible to make this perfectly run constantly but you know we just it's just an experiment it's just a C how long this can go and I, I personally would be amazed if this outlives me but I'm gonna give it a go like I said a load of times it's just gonna be it's gonna be pretty cool inverted commas won't turn off in my lifetime dot 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 built from some rubbish parts which will break in a few months <laughs> like I said initially yeah it's true but we just don't know like there's a lot of doubt on the comments but there's who knows that's the thing the main thing is the only thing that's going to prove that this may work is just the test of time and i'm just going to see how long i can keep it up for like i said i will be improving the cards and the number cards over time you have to put a kilowatt an hour counter on it to measure how much energy you've spent this is very true as well it is right in its current form it is quite hungry it runs at about i don't know it's about three amps which is it's quite a lot it's nearly as much as a fridge just to run this thing but obviously like i said the plan is to struggle the top ones uh, but at the same time I could just turn off the top ones when it's not running and then like I said with the solar panels when it's on solar panels it really doesn't matter so maybe I need to just jump onto the solar panels get some on the ceiling ceiling on the roof and then that'll be awesome oh yeah and there was another one that happened quite a lot is saying uh, this doesn't count to a google it counts to one below a google it's sort of true but it isn't because this is a google counter on the Google Google of count or whatever it is, it resets. That's what a Google counter is. That's what a counter does. A, a, something that will count to a hundred wouldn't just would would only have two digits, and it just resets. Uh, that's what it would do. Because if it had another digit, well, it would end up counting to, you know, nine Google dot nine nine nine. So it doesn't really make sense to have an extra one. It has a trigger out on the top. In fact, it has trigger outputs on every single one of the counters. So I'm able to plug things in later on. I'm planning on putting some like secret bits and stuff like who knows because this can send a voltage trigger out on every single clock and that is actually what you're hearing with the audio output on the side. It's basically a bus of all of the outputs. 
So uh, you can either isolate it from the bus and have it going out separately, or you can have it on the bus and listening to it. So th you're listening to the oscillation is just basically coming from the trigger outputs of all of the carryovers. Can it play Doom? <laughs> I don't know, but I'm happy for anybody to take up the challenge. If they think they can get Doom playing on this, then get, get in contact. A lot of people have mentioned the long now. This is very true. This is a clock that will count over 10,000 years, which is probably most definitely uh, be uh, built better. Obviously, it had a lot of budget. This thing hasn't had a massive amount of budget. It's probably cost about, I don't know, 1,200 pounds to actually make it. And that is thanks to the amazing patrons and patron support. So thank you for letting me try out these crazy, ridiculous experiments. So can't thank you for the support enough because, yeah, literally all goes into silly things like that. But, yeah, obviously it's not quite Jeff Bezos' uh, budget. So um, hopefully you never know. You never know. <laughs> there was a lot of uh, 42s happening. And, yeah, yeah, this is very true. I'm quite glad that it's uh, captured the uh, imagination of people because, yeah, it uh, the, the main aim for building this was not to count that to the top it was just to show people the just literal massive size of a number and how long it literally actually takes because if you imagine it if you show it to somebody like if you speak about it you don't really get the idea of the scale just seeing it practically in front of you I don't know it's just a, a, something something a bit more obvious to me personally and hopefully to other people as well like um i was speaking to i don't know my my friends and stuff and some people just haven't even thought of a google or you know and now they think about it it's like oh gosh yeah that is a big number even though technically when you describe it 100 zeros you think oh 100 zeros i could write that in a matter of seconds but then you realize the actual implication of these 100 zeros and you're stuck with a pretty big number but yeah i thought i should just update you on the number where it is now there will be a stream happening very soon with this i'm trying to find somewhere right for it to have a webcam in front of it and still be visible around in the museum i may need to uh, cut a hole in a wall so there's a window or something but there'll be a uh, update on this rather soon so keep an eye on socials like twitter or something and there'll be there'll be a link to the stream but thank you very much to the support on patreon because yeah all of that support goes straight into things like this and yeah if you want to see more bigger projects and stuff like that and please go and check out over on my Patreon because this is basically what supports these things and I can't thank the support enough because it's literally made it possible to try and open a museum which is going to be going to be interesting so yeah the support is very much appreciated as yeah it, it culminates in things like this instead of me driving around in a Mercedes which I don't in fact right now I haven't got a car because I've spent all my money on silly things like this <laughs> anyway I've been Luke Mumno Computer so this is the museum of everything else hopefully it will be open soon because right now in the UK nothing like this is allowed to open so we'll see later in the year and yeah you can come and see this i don't know where the number will be uh in the i think in about 50 days the next carryover the next big occasion will happen so hopefully by then the stream will be up so we can all see it together anyway totally do